Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Four Scandinavian airlines have become the first in the world to officially ditch their onboard mask requirement. You don't have to wear a mask on board flights if you don't want to. This is on regional flights and this is a very interesting development because going back 18 months ago, flights and aeroplanes were one of the first places to have strictly enforced mask mandates and they still are in many places in the world. I've been talking a lot about Scandinavian countries recently. Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Iceland last week. Scandinavian countries, you have to cut me some sort of deal here. I'm talking so much about you. But there's many interesting things happening right now in Scandinavian countries. I've actually visited much of Europe, but I have never been to a Scandinavian country before. The Scandinavian countries are Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. There's some debate whether Finland counts in that or not, but the three main countries are the three I just mentioned. And the Northern Lights has always been on my bucket list. Can't wait to get there once we start traveling again. Trust the land of the Vikings to be pioneering things. The Vikings actually have a mythical, mysterious kind of reputation. But this is a little history lesson for you here. If you want a lesson on absolute brutality, a thousand years ago when the Vikings, the seafarers from those Scandinavian countries invaded the countries down south, what they did was absolutely horrible. If you go online and read about what they did when they invaded countries like Great Britain and Ireland. But thankfully we have moved on from those times and now Scandinavian countries are among the most peaceful in the world. Their people are very highly educated, very smart. And I do believe that they've been following the science when it comes to COVID-19 more than many other nations. Coming back to their airlines then, which have ditched their mask requirements, Scandinavian Airlines, SAS, their most well-known airline, headquartered in Sweden, Norwegian Airlines, and two other local carriers, and this is for regional flights only. Going back, I'm thinking even pre-COVID, I remember sitting on planes and thinking to myself, goodness gracious me, we have all of these people, hundreds of people in a small place, a crowded environment. There is an awful lot of shared air here perfect recipe for pathogens to be transmitted. Is this, however, backed up with evidence? Because small studies show that actually in terms of indoor environments, aeroplanes and flights are actually very safe to do with how air circulates. I want to share something with you here, which is on the International Air Transport Association website. How good is the cabin air? The risk of transmission in the modern cabin environment is low for a number of reasons. Passengers face the same direction, seat backs act as barriers, airflow is from top to bottom, and the air is also very clean. Cabin air is refreshed 20 to 30 times an hour, about 10 times more than most office buildings. The air supplied on board an aircraft is half HEPA filtered and half fresh air. 99.993%. This is the bacteria virus removal efficiency rate of the HEPA filters on board. It includes SARS, which is similar to COVID-19. Top to bottom airflow. The direction of the airflow in an aircraft is from top to bottom and not along the length of the aircraft. So all of that would suggest that the air on board an aircraft is actually very safe for reducing the rate of virus or bacteria transmission. I want to share with you now an article from JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, an article that came out at the end of last year, 2020. There's this diagram here showing how air is filtered on board a plane. Despite substantial numbers of travelers, the number of suspected and confirmed cases of in-flight COVID-19 transmission between passengers around the world appears small, approximately 42 in total. In comparison, a study of COVID-19 transmission aboard high-speed trains in China among contacts of more than 2,300 known cases showed an overall rate of 0.3% among all passengers. Interestingly, it then goes on to say, onboard risk can be further reduced with face coverings as in other settings where physical distancing cannot be maintained. That last sentence there, it's a point to keep in mind. 
There may be certain groups, especially I'm thinking the elderly or vulnerable, who have reason why they may want to reduce risk as much as possible. Even in a low risk environment, they may want to be extra cautious for their own peace of mind as well, especially if COVID-19 rates are high at any particular time. So the evidence and research does suggest then that if you're going to be in an indoor environment, a flight, an aeroplane may be among the safest of places you can be. And that's to do precisely with how the air circulates. So if you look in most parts of the world when it comes to flying, mask mandates are very strictly enforced. And that includes the United States. Literally, you can only take your mask off to eat or drink. And if you leave it off for any longer, the flight attendants will come and speak to you. Is this truly following the science? Are these Scandinavian airlines doing the right thing? Will other airlines follow suit? I expect if it happens, it will happen in Europe before it happens in the United States. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you impatient to take your mask off on a plane or are you quite happy to continue wearing one? Thanks for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, MedStroke Lifestyle Medicine. We'll speak again very soon.